Hey guys, my name is Francesco from Soundbreaking Productions. Uh, today's guide is going to be on the recording in Logic Pro X and some of the basic features that are in Logic Pro X, uh, some uh, effects that you can use, uh, how to detect your audio interface, and all of that stuff. Uh, we're, it's all going to be here in this video. But before we start, I want you to look at my blog on www.soundbreakingproductions.com. It has a bunch of tutorials and product reviews uh, in which I use in my current home studio and uh, that other people around the world use. Uh, they're really great products and I recommend uh, the ones that I uh, created a review for. So for today's video, uh, the beginning, I'm going to be showing you how to detect your audio interface. So here it is. Go to Logic Pro X on top and we're gonna go to preferences and we're gonna go to audio okay so once we're here we're gonna look at our output device and our input device our output device device sorry is Scarlett 18i20 USB and our input device is Scarlett 18i20 USB so this is my audio interface that I currently have right now you should see something else different unless you have the Scarlett 18i20 then you'll see the same thing uh, so basically uh, what we want to do is we want to check that our interface is connected to Logic Pro X and that Logic Pro X is recognizing this interface. So once you see that your interface is being recognized here, that means you're in the clear and that you're going to be getting high quality recordings from your device. So once you see that your interface is here, we can X this out and we can go back to Logic Pro X. Okay, so the second thing that I want to show you is how to actually record a track on Logic Pro X. So what you do is you have to go and arm your track. So we're arming our track by pressing the R on our track. This is where your track is. Uh, we pressed R and now to actually start recording we're going to press uh, the red record button up top or you can press R on your keyboard. We're gonna go and press the red record button um, so once I press the red record button, you're going to see the track start to record here. And as I'm talking, you'll see that there are sound waves uh, that are being registered by the curves. So uh, let's start. Let's hit record here. So I hit record. And as you can see right now, you can see tiny little sound waves, um, the curves of each sound wave. Uh, my output device is, uh, I mean my input device, my microphone is a little far from me so you won't be able to see the curves and also I'm not zoomed in, into this so you, it's really hard to see the curves from here. So the second thing that we have to do after we're done with this, uh, we press the spacebar to stop recording and uh, so that's basically how you record. Now I want to show you next to the R there's an I button right here. This is for input monitoring, and what that does is it lets you hear what your uh, you recorded over here in your headphones or your monitors. So this is also really important to have if you're tracking guitars or you're tracking uh, um, keyboards or anything like that. It's not really good if you're tracking vocals unless you're wearing a head headphones because or else the monitors could bleed into the mic and you'll have a lot of sound from outside sources that you don't want. So I would recommend that you only wear headphones for recording vocals and that the monitors are shut off. Next, we have the S over here. That stands for solo. Basically when we have a bunch of tracks here uh, and we only want to hear the output from one track, we hit the solo button and it'll mute all of the other tracks and only play this current track that we have right here that's yellow. The next button after that is the mute button. The mute button silences this track without deleting it so you can hear all of the other tracks. So these are all pretty important buttons from the mixing process um, so you can add effects to the track and all of that. So this, these are the buttons that you'd probably be using the most in your mixing process. Um, next, I want to turn to the input because this is very important for multi-tracking. If you have a interface that has more than one input 
and you are singing and playing piano or singing and playing guitar or even playing drums where you have multiple mics set up for each drum. Uh, multi-tracking is going to be a very very important skill for you so what you want to do is for each track that you have so let's create we're gonna go on and create uh, three tracks for example okay so now we have four tracks here okay the first track is gonna be set to input one that's my first microphone my second track is going to be set to input two that's for my second microphone, which I don't have one connected right now, so you don't see any in, uh, any input source happening in this bar right here. The third one, the same thing, I don't have a third or a fourth one. So the third one, input three, and the fourth one, input four. My interface can support up to 18, I think, 18 tracks, 18 separate tracks so that I can have, I can record 18 different instruments all at the same time. Um, it's a little overkill for a home studio, but the quality of this interface is pretty awesome. I have a review of my Focusrite Scarlett 18i20 on my channel, and uh, you can so you can see it uh, if you go under my videos, or I'll, link, I'll post a link to it in my description for you. Uh, so each one of these inputs uh, allow you to record a different track from a different microphone. So basically, this is the most important part when you multi-track, uh, setting the inputs. So that when you press record, you'll be able to uh, record four, four tracks all at once. So what you do is you arm all of the tracks. I don't know if this is actually going to work because I don't have any inputs. It may work. Let's see. You arm all the tracks and you start to record. You see how it's recording four tracks at once now? I don't have the microphones for these tracks, so you're not going to see any sound waves happening. But I do have a microphone connected here, which I'm talking to right now, and uh, you could see sound waves happening. So aside from all of that, uh, that's the multi-tracking aspect of Logic Pro X. Uh, now, let's go back to Audio 1, and I want you to turn your head to the FX part of it. Now this is the part of mixing uh, the track where you can uh, add reverb and you can add a bunch of uh, different effects to your track to make it sound better. Now the mixing process is the most important part of the actual pr uh, processing of your track. Uh, this is where your reverb comes in, this is where you fix the levels of each instrument and basically that you are mixing together all the tracks uh, so that they sound the best together. Uh, in this process, in the mixing process, there's the EQ part um, where you can have just the regular EQ that Logic Pro X comes with or you can have a separate EQ that uh, you bought maybe from the Waves packages. Um, so here are the FX. I actually bought some outside FX uh, processors. So um, these are basically the main ones that come with the Logic Pro X, but I actually bought different uh, plugins which are located in my audio units. And I have the Waves bundle, the Platinum bundle, which is a really high quality bundle from Waves. It has everything that you need to compose, uh, not to compose and to uh, record every genre of music there is. Uh, it has effects for hip hop, has effects for rock, um, basically everything that you would want is in the Waves plugins. Um, I also have Softube that came with my uh, interface and also Focusrite Red EQs which are pretty good as well, they're not bad. Um, so these are all the effects you have. Uh, you may not have all the effects that I have unless you buy them separately. Uh, I'll actually post a, an affiliate link on the bottom of this description. You can look at it, and if you're interested, please uh, purchase it from me from Amazon. Uh, I get a small commission from it, but uh, I'm able to uh, make these videos for you to help you. Um, the commission is not uh, charged to you, and basically you pay the same price that anybody else would uh, for the product at no extra charge. So. 
as far as this video goes, we went over the effects, uh, we went over the inputs, we went over how to arm a track and how to actually record. Uh, there are also some other things that you can do here. So let's say I want to add a software instrument. Software instruments are basically for MIDI um, keyboards and such. And I have a MIDI keyboard at home. This is the M Audio Keystation 49ES. And uh, basically, it's a really nice keyboard. Uh, I have a review of it as well. Um, it's on my website and also on uh, my YouTube channel. Aside from all of that, I'm not going to give a product review for the key station. I'm just going to tell you uh, about this uh, Logic Pro X and how to use this uh, keyboard with it. So basically, you go into Logic Pro X and you see this uh, track that I made here for the software instrument. Uh, you're going to press record here and you arm your track and you press record up here and it'll start recording and you have quite a lot of different sounds here that you can use for uh, recording. Uh, once you create a software instrument this will all come up for you right away and you also have the uh, opportunity if you want to purchase other synths and other things from either Amazon or uh, anywhere, any other music, uh, any other store that sells musical equipment. Uh, you can, it all integrates into Logic Pro. There are probably tutorials out there that uh, mention how to install everything. And basically what you're going to do is you just press 1 and you start recording with it. So I, I chose a marimba. Uh, is it, is it going to play right now? I don't know if it's going to play, but we'll see. Yeah, it's, it's playing, but there we go. So. So, as you can see, um, it does play. Um, you can record, you can do all types of stuff with it, and you can add effects to it as well. Uh, the very last thing that I want to go over are these, uh, if you press X, I think it's X, yeah, all of the, the mixers, the mixer for the program will pop up. So these will show you all of the faders that you can work with during the mixer process. And uh, it, you can dim, you can make one lower or higher depending on the volume of the track. Uh, you can access all of the effects that you have from here. Um, this is a really, really awesome tool. I really suggest that you put this somewhere else on another screen. This way while you're mixing, you see exactly what's happening on a bigger screen instead of looking at it over here. Um, so if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, don't forget www.soundbreakingproductions.com. Uh, I have a bunch of product reviews, tutorials, and things that home recording uh, studio owners would enjoy to look at. Uh, anything else that I have to tell you look in the description uh, for anything any news and basically that's all thank you very much for watching my video and I hope it served you well see you soon